Hey guys, it's Mad Static, and I'm pretty sure I've stated my thoughts about Jump Force once or twice on the channel before. With the hours of gameplay I've seen others post, the amount of negative reviews the game garnered, and my own experience with Shonen Jump's previous anniversary game, J-Star's Victory vs. Plus, I thought the game looked pretty shit and swore off buying it. But recently, the game has had an astronomical shift that changed everything, and single-handedly made me go back on my word. That change being a really, really good sale where you got the deluxe version of the game for like $17. I can't lie, despite my better senses, a part of me always gave way to this game's eye candy. Which is why I'd always watch others playing it instead of wasting my own money. Plus, recently in terms of games, I've been trying out dumpster diving and playing games I know are terrible. You know, for notes and stuff. So it's about time I gave Jump Force a fair shake. By which I mean a few hours. In case you don't know, Jump Force is a 3D anime arena fighter released on February 15th, 2019 here in the US States. It's developed by Spike Chunsoft, published by Bandai Namco, and stars big named characters from Shonen Jump's catalog to beat each other up. You've got all the famous Asian cartoons, Goku, Nerito, Goku 2. The game is renowned as a goddamn catfish, as it was looking to be a huge step up for most licensed anime games, but came out as the same old mediocre experience, featuring dull combat and a lack of content, covered up with very expensive makeup. Now, from my experience, Jump Force is... is still that, but admittedly, does succeed in places I thought it would fail. Likewise, though, it does screw up in places that not even I foresaw with my <laughs> elite gamer perception but overall creates a better gaming experience than I would have even reckoned. But you know, with all this being wrong, I figured the best place to start is somewhere I got right. The story of Jump Force is great. With my Zoom classes. They suit each other perfectly, because I'd start grinding my teeth if I had to spend my own time playing through the campaign, but I'd also fall asleep if I had to sit at my desk at home and focus on these lessons for like 3 hours straight. So this game story gives me something to actively progress through while not actively requiring my attention which I can then use for my lecture. I don't want to bash this game's story too much, since even the best fighting games barely attempt to have one. The problem, though, is that there isn't too much else to talk about in this game, so leaving it out leaves a uh, lot less to actually talk about. Evil doers are wreaking havoc across everywhere, so it's up to our heroes to recruit more heroes to save the world. Along the way, they'll make new friends, save lives, beat up bad guys, and ultimately triumph through the power of Nakima. All of this with less flavor than a filler episode. Unless you're talking about like a Dragon Ball or One Piece filler, those are actually pretty good. The story being basic and bland is fine, I was actually expecting that much, but honestly, most of the game feels like that. When you start examining details and everything that isn't fighting, there's a distinct lack of charisma or charm, and that's a pretty fatal flaw for this type of game specifically. When making games based off licensed animes, developers are rarely given the time, money, or resources to actually make a good game. Therefore, they instead focus on making a good anime game. They coast by on making games that capture the experience and feeling of their respective franchises, which not only shows that the people behind these products actually care about what they're making, but turn a relatively mediocre game into something that can at least be appreciated by fans of the source material. That little glimpse of care is nowhere to be seen in Jump Force. Actually, there's not a lot of character to be seen in general. The overworld, OST, and backgrounds barely even feel like anime in general, let alone an anniversary of multiple. An excuse someone may come up with is that personality can't be expressed as thoroughly as other anime games, because this is a combination of multiple different franchises. I personally don't take that into consideration since J-Star is very distinctly felt like a combination of shonen, and that game's worse. Just look at the design of this title screen. Does this look like the people behind this enjoyed making it? Another aspect worth going over is the player UI, which is inconvenient as all hell, with a buffer or load for just about every other option or menu you press on. Some may not find all these aspects important as it has little to do with actual gameplay, but without personality, convenience, and quality of life adjustments, players can feel demotivated or lack an interest to engage with the game's content outside of regular battle. I mean which works since there's not a lot to do outside of that, but that still isn't a good thing. A lot of this stuff goes beyond inconvenience though, like how it took 4 months for the teams to add a rematch button to online matches, which is something that no excuse could possibly make sense of, and just further goes to show that most of the problems with this game aren't just due to a lack of funding, but a genuine lack of care. And to be honest, I don't really blame them. This game feels much less like an anniversary event, and much more like a product for marketing. And yes of course, just about every game is, but the point is, it's the main takeaway here. 
Nothing here feels like it came from a place of passion or quality, but instead like it had to be done to increase revenue. For example, a hot topic upon the game's release was its roster of characters, which lacks serious variety in favor of more names from bigger franchises. This makes nothing but sense from a business angle, as not only are they drawing in more fans from those bigger franchises, but saving money by not using assets that aren't essential. Though from fan perspectives, it makes no sense, as a gargantuan number of series from Jump's 50 years of publishing aren't getting any kind of representation or love, which kind of neglects more hardcore fans and only appeals to more moderate consumers of Shonen. But even fans of those franchises that were front and center would be fuddled by some of the additions. There are no Dragon Ball fans that ask for Cell, there are no Hunter Hunter fans that ask for Bisky, and there are no Boruto fans in general, so I don't even know where he came from. I'm joking, of course, but it's really disappointing. As bad as J-Stars was, it really did bring in a lot of Jump's history to the forefront, and got me introduced and into characters and franchises I wouldn't have otherwise. But to get back on topic, let's look at the aspect of this game most influenced by the big business. I feel like corporate heads that don't know or care how games actually worked pushed for Jump Force's graphics to look as good as they do, with no exceptions. This resulted in absolute success in hyping this game up and selling people on it, but resulted in the game fucking up in more ways than it really should have. The biggest positive of this game isn't even actually a positive. In fact, it's probably responsible for the game's biggest problems. On a surface level and in action, yeah, this game looks amazing, unrealistically good sometimes, but only really in specific situations. In order to make the fights look good, the rest of the game suffers immensely. You know those mods for games that make it look like 50 times better and leave you wondering why the game didn't look like it in the first place? This is why. Anywhere outside of fighting, the game actually looks really rough, from environments that aren't fully detailed or rendered to the actual character models. While fighting, they look fine, but talking, moving, or anything else makes them look on par with Gary's mod skin packs. It doesn't look natural at all. Most damningly and by far the game's biggest flaw are the technical problems, which I'm guessing are the cost of all of this eye candy. The frames are dead. They cannot keep up in any capacity, resulting in the choppiest looking game I've ever seen on a console. I'm also guessing this is why the game needs to load for every other thing you do. The loading times aren't even the issue, it's the amount of times the game needs to load that messes it all up. Keep your phone next to you, cause you're not waiting a while, you're just waiting a lot. To wrap up technical faults, let's look at the silliest and most... what the fuck? Blackbeard is known as... <laughs> <laughs> large by the community for being basically unplayable. Not specifically for anything subjective, like a worse moveset or something, though to be fair from what I've played of him, he is a lot slower to start up combos. No, the main problem is his actual character model, which is so big that during gameplay, it will often cover the enemy from the camera, making it much more difficult to see what they're actually doing. That's... I don't... That is the... Un incomprehensible that a fuck up like that made it into a triple a game that's goofy shit i'd expect from like an indie mobile ripoff what kind of development team lets that happen scratch that what kind of development team lets it stay like that two years after release again a development team that doesn't care now i'm sorry the bulk of this video has been so negative it's supposed to be a positive look at the game but then again i'm looking over the whole thing so it's not my fault there's a lot to bitch about the things I just went over are problems, and shouldn't be excused. But, when it comes to what most players actually wanted out of this game, I think it managed to succeed. Which is why the game has such a large number of actual supporters. I paid some compliments to J-Star's Victory Versus, this game's predecessor. And while it does have much more character, a fairly large amount of extras, and genuinely feels like an homage to these series, it's still a worse game. And no amount of anime spirit will save it from that. And that's because Jump Force's combat is pretty okay. Now don't get me wrong, mechanically it's no more than average. It's a simple 3D arena fighter that goes as deep as an inflatable pool. If you played One Piece Burning Blood, it's most similar to that. But this simplicity actually plays into its favor, making it easy for anyone to come in and have mediocre amounts of fun. Most skill comes from baiting opponents to waste their assets and then going in for the kill. But the real thrill comes from the look of it all. This is where the game comes through in full, with every move in the game looking and feeling appropriately epic and bombastic, truly showing that this is where the entirety of the workforce was actually focused. Now, like any inflatable kiddie pool, holes can be easily poked, 
and the combat's lack of substance has bred a player base that uses and exploits the game's shortcomings. But if you don't mind bullshit every once in a often, you can do so much worse than this game. Another short but pretty important positive I can touch up on is the custom character. Now the character customizer itself isn't that impressive, but this addition might be one of the most important inclusions in Jump Force, as it serves as the game's only real incentive towards playing more. Through playing, you can make individuals more powerful through leveling up, and through those levels you can take on harder specialized missions that have you taken on characters or higher levels. The reward for these harder missions includes currency and items and junk, but most importantly, the currency you earn through these battles and missions can then be used to get goodies for your custom gag, like costumes. By the end of it all, your person will look more like a mishmash of cosplays than your own actual anime hero, but it's something to work towards. Even better, you can take most of your favorite special moves from characters and put them on your own gag. This is really important, because while there's not a lot to do in Jump Force, you get a decent amount for doing what's there. Alright look, this game is another anime corporate cash grab, with the people behind the scenes not even trying to act like they care. But admittedly, it's a cash grab with a little more credit to its name than I would have originally thought. I'm a simple guy, okay? I just want to see Dio slam a steamroll into Naruto. And if you have a similar urge to make your favorite shonen characters beat the shit out of each other, and you look good doing it, Jump Force is fine, I guess.